The following is an exclusive presentation of BYU Athletics in association with BYU Broadcasting. It's time for BYU Women's Soccer, live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Deep cross, headed toward Freeman in! A goal by Elise Blake and the Cougars open up on top! This is Cougar Pre-Match Live. Coming up, we'll hear from head coach Jennifer Rockwood and we'll get a look at today's starting lineups. Let's begin our coverage of BYU Women's Soccer and join the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good evening, Cougar soccer fans. Welcome pitch side inside Southfield on the beautiful BYU campus in Provo, Utah. Tonight, it's a massive match, an early season game with postseason implications. Two top 15 teams, both undefeated to start the season, both on shutout streaks. It's a 4-0 and BYU home to 4-0 and 2, Texas A&M, and Southfield should be standing room only tonight. I'm your play-by-play commentator, Greg Rubel. My broadcast partner is former BYU player Avery Walker. And Ava, what a setup uh, for tonight. Uh, the Cougs on a roll. They're well rested. Uh, the home fans are going to be fired up. Uh, BYU again already leads the nation in attendance. There are so few games when you get the chance to put a stamp on your postseason resume. And tonight's game is one of those. A win tonight will add just a little extra validation uh, to the Cougs' number 10 ranking. It's a match that really could resonate for months if BYU wins it. Yeah, I mean, Greg, you mentioned so many good things that we have going for us tonight. Um, it's broadcasters mostly. We got uh, the temperatures dropped a little bit, which is really nice for us, and obviously both player, both teams. And then you know this rematch you mentioned, we saw each other in um, in postseason last year, and how those were both big games for these both these groups. So I think the rematch is going to be exciting, and I know BYU has been posting a lot on social media about breaking the attendance record. So I think we're in for a wild night. All right, coming up after the break, we'll hear from BYU head coach Jennifer Rockwood as BYU women's soccer coverage continues live from Southfield on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. I want to make dessert. This is Cougar Pre-Match Live. It's time to get the scoop on today's match from head coach Jennifer Rockwood. Let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Welcome back to Southfield here in Provo, Utah tonight. Number 10, BYU, and number 12, Texas A&M. In a rematch from last season when the Aggies came away with a 2-0 win in College Station. Last season's meeting was the first ever between these two programs. It is time now for our pre-match interview with BYU head coach Jennifer Rockwood. Brought to you by Zions Bank. For banking that helps you tackle every financial challenge, Zions Bank is for you. And in the build-up to tonight's match, I asked about uh, how she uh, put this early season schedule together and how maybe tonight's game fits into her overall objective. I mean, I think sometimes you don't and didn't intentionally, you know, have one game each week. Uh, sometimes the scheduling is just challenging, and so you just do what you do. But it's obviously worked out very well for us. Uh, Anim had two games, went into overtime on Sunday. So, yeah, we're coming in just off of one game, a really good game where we were challenged, you know, um, had to play a little bit more defense than we're used to. And I think that's really helped prepare us, uh, you know, to probably play our best opponent so far this season. Maybe hit defense. As, as much as, as goals are rolling in right now, you, you guys have been so solid on the back. Uh, absolutely, and, and it's actually something that we focused on this week again. Again, trying to always prepare for your best opponent. Um, just trying to clean a little things up. Um, we're able to look at some film. Um, Utah was dangerous on a lot of their crosses and their runs in the box, so um, that was good for us you know, to learn from a few mistakes when you win. Um, and so that's what we've kind of done, just clean things up a little bit in the back. But our, our defense has been solid, and, and the fact that uh, being in Josie get involved so much in the attack, that's, that is part of our defense. It is great if something happens on the back line that maybe gets past you to have a keeper like Sab who's been cleaning things up really well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, every once in a while things are you know, going to break down, and that's what you need your keepers to do is, is make those big saves. And she was able to make a few of them for us. And, and, again, the confidence that she's continued to help our team, just knowing that she's back there and can come through when, you know, kind of called upon. And she made a couple really big saves. You know, we're up 1-0, but, you know, a tie, you know, it really turns the momentum. How important is it that uh, Elise has now scored in three consecutive games for you? That's really important. You know, she's got off to a great start. And, uh, and again, it goes back to giving confidence in the team that knowing that, that she's probably going to score a goal. And, um, and every time she gets the ball, she's dangerous. Um, the great thing about our team is that we don't just have to rely on Elise. We know the goals can come from anywhere, from anybody. And that's what we've really been focusing on um, a lot is just that attack and our comfort, uh, being comfortable taking people one-on-one. So you, know, you get being involved, you get Lizzie involved, and Cam, you know, had a big goal for her first goal of the season, and so it can come anywhere at any time, and 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 that's that's really helpful. Cam's goal is big, isn't it, for her personally and for your team? Yeah, for sure. I mean, Cam's come in. You know, she's a starter this year. She's had a great preseason. She's 
she's uh, getting better with each game but you know sometimes as a goal scorer you haven't got that goal you get a little frustrated so I think that was huge for her just kind of break the ice um, she's been very dangerous and I think she's going to continue just to be more and more of a handful especially if people start focusing a little bit on Elise I think it'll open things up for Cam. This A&M game recollections of the game you played at their place uh, late August last year College Station. Yeah it's probably one of my most favorite Ooh. memories of a, an away any type of recent games away the the atmosphere the fan base even though we lost it was a great experience for us and uh you know G always does such a great job with him they're always prepared they just reload each year no matter what and um we got off to a really good start that's something that we talk about a lot is getting off to a good start setting the tone dictate our attack and want to make them uncomfortable and and that's something we really did a great job of you were unlucky to not get a goal early yeah we did a really great job of that but we didn't put it away and uh, you know they scored right before halftime and then one right before the end of the game so the girls are coming in knowing how well they played last year knowing that we've made lots of strides uh, that we're a much better prepared team and so you know expectations high such a great program they've got. They've made the NCAA tournament every year since 1995. G, as you know, has done it for a long, long time, like yourself. They opened 10-0 and to start last year. They come in undefeated to start this year, both in the top 15. I mean, what a great buildup for this match. It is, and we knew, you know, looking forward to this uh, during the summer, that this would be a big game either, you know, no matter what we were leading up to. But it's uh, right where we want it, you know, an opportunity to uh, play a top-ranked opponent, um, on our home field when we're playing really well. You know, we hope that, that we can challenge them a little bit more. Their, their games last weekend weren't as challenging for them. Um, we felt that a little bit uh, in the Utah game, just haven't had, hadn't pressed a lot, didn't have to have our defense involved much, and then went right into it with Utah. So hopefully our Utah game has really helped us prepare for the speed of play, the physicality, uh, and the athleticism that a and going to have. Allie Watt, number one, is one of the best players in the game as well. Absolutely. She's so dangerous. Loves to try and get in behind. They obviously look for her in space and behind. And she was dangerous against us last year. And I'm sure she's also evolved and is coming in with more confidence and more goals in behind her. So, um, yeah, we have to definitely know where she is at all times. You mentioned the experience there last year, just the, uh, the game day environment. They fed off their crowd. You've been feeding off your crowd. Yeah, you know, we told Gia when we when he was coming back that we hope to give him a similar type environment because it was so fantastic when we were there before. And you know, I think the weather's supposed to be, you know, it's going to be great come game time. And uh, we've had great support for our first two home games, and hope that fans will come out and watch, you know, two really experienced and talented soccer programs. You're ranked in the top ten overall, and you're number one when it comes to attendance. So hopefully that keeps rolling too. Yes, yeah, we like those. We like those numbers. Jen, good luck against a and We'll talk to you post-match. All right, thanks. That is BYU head coach Jennifer Rockwood. Coming up next, Cougar Pre-Match Live continues as we hear from senior defender Alyssa Jefferson. This is live coverage of BYU women's soccer on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's time to hear from the Cougars themselves as we head back to the broadcast booth for our pre-match interview. Here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Hello, good evening once again from Southfield on the BYU campus in Provo, Utah. For the first time this season, it truly feels like fall is in the air. As the temperatures have turned a bit, the colors on the mountains doing the same, and tonight uh, ranked teams collide as the BYU Cougars host Texas A&M. BYU off to a 4-0 start to the season, looking to go 5-0 for the first time in nine years. I'm Greg Grubel with me, former Cougar Avery Walker, and uh, you are listening to us tonight on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. We are heard on our flagship BYU Radio 107.9 FM, on the BYU Cougars app on ESPN 960 AM, and the ESPN 960 app, as well as BYUCougars.com slash live radio. You can hear the radio broadcasts and highlights on demand via the BYU Women's Soccer Podcast and at BYURadio.org. Well, as well as BYU's played in uh, getting off to this undefeated start 4-0, tonight's challenge by far the stiffest the Cougars have faced so far this season. Uh, Texas A&M also undefeated, having played two more matches than BYU. And most impressively, the Aggies haven't allowed a goal since a season-opening win at Santa Clara in late August. Five straight clean sheets since, but by the same token, Ave, uh, Texas A&M knows that its shutout streak is in uh, jeopardy tonight. Uh, BYU is averaging three goals per game as one of the top offensive teams in the country, and Elise Flake is now officially on a roll. She has scored in three straight games. Yeah, BYU and Texas A&M are some of the, the best teams we're going to see this season, that's for sure. And you mentioned Ali Watt in your, uh, your pregame interview with Coach Rockwood, and I'm excited to see what she can do against BYU's pretty stingy defense so far this season. And along with that, I think Elise Flake is, is might 
I think she's going to have a little bit of a, a struggle. I think going into it, a team like Texas A&M will identify her and her movement and try to shut it down. And I think as far as BYU is concerned, they might have to rely on somebody else, maybe a Cam Tucker again or an outside back to come through. Time now for our pre-match player interview. And tonight we hit the BYU back line as we hear from senior center back Alyssa Jefferson, who's part of a BYU defensive effort that has kept opponents without a single goal in the run of play so far this season. It's huge. We worked a lot on defense kind of over the summer. And I don't know, our first few practices were just working on defense. And it starts up top, but, you know, it's really nice returning a whole back line. Like, you don't have to start from square one. And I think that's been a huge factor is we've had a year to play together where we figured things out. And so now it's just moving forward, just fine tuning and like cleaning things up. So it's been a lot of fun. I mean, I'm biased, but I love our back line. I mean, we're unstoppable. It's fun. One goal allowed in four games, and it came on a PK at Mississippi State. Yeah, that was my mistake. I mean, I know better. I can't go down in the box, and everything a defender does is magnified ten times, like every mistake. And so, you know, we know better. I'll be better, but I'm not worried about it. it Kayla came through, scored the goal, and we got the win. So you got to rely on your teammates sometimes. You've allowed one, but you've scored 12. <laughs> Offense is rolling right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just fun. You can get the ball up there, Cam, Elise, Kayla. Like, Lizzie's dangerous. It's just so much fun. The fact that Elise has now scored in back-to-back-to-back games and then Cam finally gets going, how important is it that that strike partnership be seeing success consistently? Yeah, we were lucky because they got to work together over the summer with the Royals. And so just getting both of them going is going to be big for us this year. Like, they're obviously both playmakers. And once we get Cam rolling, on, like, she's just getting started and it's just going to be super dangerous. It'll be really good for us. Not every team gets to return uh, an entire back line and a keeper like you guys did for this year. When you know you've got that going, there are probably some expectations that you're going to be pretty good, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. There are things that you learned last season that you're expected to hold true to again this next year. Like, you guys know better. You need to do this and this and this. And so it definitely has expectations, but I don't know. Good things come from it. It's it's just been really nice, really refreshing to not have to go back to the very beginning and right. re integrate someone new and how would you describe the chemistry between the four of you and uh, and Seb it's really good I mean like I said I'm biased I love everyone on the back line it's I don't know we know how each other play even I think it shows with how interchangeable we can be mm-hmm. like occasionally I'll have to go on the left side for Dan and right. she'll sit on the right and we'll be there for a few minutes or like one of the games Josie came over to my side like it just shows I don't know if we didn't have that chemistry we wouldn't be able to make switches like that we wouldn't be as comfortable and so I think it just shows how we know how each other play we can read each other well, and I think that's another testament to why we've done so well so far because we're there for each other. We read each other. We know each other, so it's good. You're known as a center back. We've seen a little bit of you at outside back, which you've done before. <laughs> oh, I love outside back. It's it's fun to be on the field, and I'm grateful, but I miss outside back. It's like my favorite position. What can you say about Sab's last game against Utah? Oh, she's amazing. I mean, I know they like made a big deal about that, but we've known she can do stuff like that all along. It's unfortunate she had to be tested like that, but... When she is, she always comes through. So uh, she's awesome. Such a stud. I love Sab. There are many more games to come yet this year, but for uh, this part of the year, it's the game of the year. It's, it's huge. It's two top 15 teams. You know how much is riding on this Texas A&M game. In your mind, what is riding on this game? Well, ever since last year when we went to their place, I felt like we owed them one. I've been looking forward to this game for a long time because I think one of their goals was pretty lucky, but, you know, they scored two against us. So, I mean, they did win outright, and... A lot is riding on this. It will be a good test. But one thing that's pretty special about this team we were good at last year, and I'm hopefully, you know, expecting us to carry over this year, is that we're really good at rising to the occasion. Like when we played Santa Clara last year, you know, nothing was expected from us. And here we came out and gave it our all, and we were able to win 2-0. So I just think we rise to the occasion, and I don't expect anything different tomorrow. Okay, you guys drew 5,000-plus uh, for the Utah game. Uh, we're hoping the weather will be fine for Texas A&M, and there should be another big crowd again already. BYU's at the top of the chart, attendance-wise, nationally. You guys take pride in that, don't you? Oh, yeah, definitely, and it helps so much. I don't think the fans could ever understand how much it means to us to have them all there because, I don't know, every away game we have so many fans, and it's just exemplified here at Southfield when we just are packed and everyone's cheering it kind of in those slow moments. You hear a little cheer, and it can get you going again. So it definitely helps a ton. It's, it's huge having Cougar Nation, so... Okay. Hope it's a big crowd. Hope it's a big win uh, for you guys against a Thanks for the time, Liz. Awesome. Thanks, Greg. That is BYU senior center back Alyssa Jefferson. Cougar pre-match live continues from Southfield right after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Welcome back to Cougar pre-match live, getting you ready for BYU women's soccer. For more pre-match coverage, here's Avery Walker and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Brubel. 
Welcome back inside Southfield here in Provo. Big crowd filing in. Through the first two games, more than 9,000 fans have seen the uh, seen the Cougars play. Go 2-0 and here at home. Uh, the Cougars currently do lead NCAA Division I in attendance, and there was a hope that tonight's match uh, could perhaps threaten the all-time single-game attendance mark of 57-35. Time will tell tonight, but it's hard to do on a true weeknight. The previous records usually come on a Friday or a Saturday. Tonight is a Thursday. There's school tomorrow for everyone. Uh, we'll see. It's, it's tough to do on anything other than a Friday or Saturday, but a big crowd will be on hand tonight for sure. Well, the visiting uh, Texas A&M Aggies also have a great home pitch advantage at Ellis Field down at College Station, and BYU experienced it firsthand last year as they fell to the Ags 2-0 last year on uh, A&M's home pitch. I spoke with Texas A&M head coach G. Guerreri a short time ago here at Southfield about uh, getting the Cougars now a year later on their turf and what he expects in tonight's top 15 showdown. Obviously, it's a game that, that we've been looking forward to. Uh, you know, I've, I've been a, a fan of what Jen has done here for the last 25 years, and um, I think that uh, the, the way the two teams play could make for a, a very attractive game for just the casual viewer, and, uh, and it's, it's a big opportunity for both teams. What do you recall from last year's meeting at your place? Well, I remember them being on top of us a lot early on. Uh, we were able to make some adjustments and got out of it. We were... Uh, we are opportunistic in the way that we scored. Uh, again, it was in front of a giant crowd as well. Mm-hmm. You know, when, when we started to uh, schedule this game, Chris Watt, Chris was still doing the scheduling at that time. But talking to Jan, we thought that uh, the back and forth, the home and home of this could probably be the two largest crowds in the country it would add up to a, a pretty cool series. Yeah. And, and it did on our end, and I know, I know it will be that way tonight when we, uh, when we step on the field. So it is a two-game deal. Any chance that these teams continue this on and, and play some more games? Probably because it's good for us. It's good to play, you know, quality teams. It's good to play teams that you respect. And uh, you know, this is our first time in uh, in Provo, so it's uh, we've enjoyed our time at least up till now, up until kickoff. We've enjoyed ourselves. So um, there's no reason to say we shouldn't. What do you expect from game day environment? From what you've heard and what you know? Um, I think it'll be loud. Uh, it'll be uh, you know. Luckily, it's, all, it's only on three, fourths, three of the four sides instead of all four sides, which is what ours is. Um, so honestly, I mean, playing in front of a big crowd, we do, do that. We do that every day. So it probably won't be as big an effect on us as it would be on 99% of the teams. Um, but our, and our girls enjoy it. Our girls enjoy playing in front of big crowds. You know, I remember going to uh, Portland in the day mm-hmm. and uh, playing really in going. front, yeah. playing in front of big crowds there, and it was always great. Um, you know, we've. We've played in front of 8,000 before. We've played in front of, you know, College Cup uh, crowds before. So it's exciting, and, you know, it just gets the adrenaline going that much more. You're coming off a two-game weekend. Uh, your thoughts on how, what transpired Friday and Sunday for you guys? Friday, uh, Ohio State, man, they've been snake bit. Their, uh, you know, their record is not indicative of the, of the team that, that Lori has. Um, we played well. Chantel played well, scored a great goal on a set piece, um, which we have a good reputation of, I think, over the years. Um, and then on uh, on Sunday we played against a team that uh, bunk did a double bunker on us, and uh, and we weren't patient enough in uh, in trying to break it down. So um, hats off to to the Ivy League kids for being smart and uh, <laughs> and getting getting what they wanted. It felt like a loss to us. It it clearly felt like a win to them after the game. So we have we can learn from these things. These are this is why we play teams that are favored to win their leagues um, in the non-conference portion of our season so that when we play against quality sides in the Southeastern Conference and hopefully again in the NCAA tournament that uh, we'll be prepared for it. Did frustration level mount did you sense as the game got on? Oh sure sure and you know our sense of urgency it really wasn't even enough I mean we were we were urgent to the effect of being impatient Mm -hmm. and uh, you know that's something that a a young team can learn from. Five straight clean sheets. Uh, clearly, what's happening on the back line has been a good thing for you. Well, and really all the way around. Um, you know, from the way Even we we defend say, we so, defend yeah. from our forwards. But yeah. uh, you know, Carlene Sample, who's a center back for us, is is an extraordinary uh, young player. Um, Jordan Hill and uh, Bree Alston. You know, come from some really athletic stock. You know, uh, Bree's dad is a former world kickboxing champion. Jordan's dad's a former NFL running back. Um, and then Callan Walton is, is the, the fourth person in that. And Callan is also an extraordinary athlete and has done a great job. So it's been hard for people to get in behind us. And any time that someone has had a, a look at goal, Shan has been yeah. up to the challenge. What do you expect out of BYU tonight? We expect a, a high-octane offense, um, especially if you look at Barnby coming down the right side. You've got, uh, you know, um, you know, 23 is someone that we 
the lineman is someone that mm-hmm. that we really respect a lot. And she, I, I remember talking to both of those players at the end of the, the game last year at our place, just telling them that I was a fan of the way that they played. Of course, you got Flake up front that has to, has to be sorted out, and uh, and Colahan who in the middle of the midfield, who can, you know, can operate the game by herself, and then. Lo and behold, she ghosts into the penalty area, and she can she can uh, punish you. She's also super dangerous on set pieces. So those four are just four great players on a, a great roster. And again, you got to take your hat off to what Jen has done here in, in building a team, but also in developing the players. Because I think all of those players are playing better this year than they were last year. Understanding you're going to build most of your RPI in league, what does this game mean to you and your resume? Do you think? Well. RPI is every game. Um, you know, when there's only 20 games in a season, every game is important. And so that's why when we schedule games, we schedule games against teams that are going to win games. Um, so that's why we're here. I mean, because BYU wins games. So every opportunity that we have to win another game is a, is another opportunity to rise in the in the RPI. And you know, when it comes time for us, when it comes time for postseason play, the more that we can play at home, just like the Cougars, right. the more we can play at home, the better the chances are that we win because of our unique atmosphere the the the, uh, unique surface that that each of these two teams play on and uh you know i remember a great byu team of of 2012 and i was shocked when they when they didn't win at all um and uh and again hats off to carolina on that night that they were able to do it but you know that's a good example of you know when you've got a strong team and you've got a great following what can happen it's the same thing with us you know in our run a couple years ago was we did it all at home and uh and you know, beating Penn State, beating Notre Dame, beating you know Arizona, all on the way to getting to uh, to the Final Four was a was a big part of it. Good hearing from you. Good to see you in Provo, and thanks for your time. Thank you, and appreciate it, and looking forward to the match. That is Texas A&M head coach G. Guerreri. He ranks eighth among active NCAA Division One coaches in win percentage. Just ahead of him, in seventh place, BYU's Jennifer Rockwood. Time now for tonight's Wilner and O'Reilly's Laws of the Game feature brought to you by Wilner and O'Reilly Immigration Solutions in Utah and abroad at wilneroreilly.com. Here's tonight's rules question. Is it permissible for a player to step off the field to avoid being offside? The answer coming up next, as well as tonight's starting lineups and the opening kick as Cougar Pre-Match Live continues from Southfield on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Welcome back to Cougar Pre-Match Live, getting you ready for BYU women's soccer. For more pre-match coverage, here's Avery Walker and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Back in Southfield and Provo, BYU and Texas A&M coming up, starting lineups momentarily. First up, the answer in tonight's soccer rules question in Wilner and O'Reilly's Laws of the Game segment. Here was tonight's rules question. Is it permissible for a player to step off the field to avoid being offside? And the ruling is no penalty if the player left the field for the sole purpose of not being offside. If, upon leaving the field, the player then distracts an opponent or assists a teammate, then the player is guilty of an infraction. That's Laws of the Game, brought to you by Wilner and O'Reilly. And this is BYU Women's Soccer on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's time for kickoff on the new skin, BYU Forward. Smith's, low prices, market fresh.